Um, this is Courier This, an animated series by Andy Mason. Interior Broken Courier Warehouse Day video. Point of view, looking down at a system of conveyor belts whipping in every direction before diving down through them, moving quickly through a busy warehouse. Parcels all neatly arranged and occasionally smoothly ejecting off the lines, parcels being placed on the belt with gentle precision. This is a modern, high technical warehouse where everything shines, is well maintained and well run. A state of the art facility investing in the future so your delivery arrives safely and on time. On the ground level, people in the mint green uniforms of broken courier services move in an almost rehearsed dance, pushing cages or carrying boxes to the sides. Forklift trucks in deep grey drive down the middle, parting the workers. One truck as it stops by a roller door. Follow one truck as it stops by a roller door. A smiling older woman gets out and is joined by three smiling workers, each carrying a box. All turn to look at the viewer. We care, we about, care your about your package. package. Interior Broken Courier Warehouse Scanning Level Day video, an old man in a blue visibility, high visibility jacket, balding, large and heavy, is sat at a large machine facing a monitor. He turns away from it to address the viewer. I care about your package. Visible on the monitor behind him, a box with a large dildo passes across the screen unchecked. Interior Broken Courier Warehouse Ground Floor Day video, narrator, jeans and, and shirt wearing officer, walks towards the viewer whilst workers in the pale green uniforms congregate behind him, all smiling at the unseen audience. Here at Broken Courier Services, we work hard to ensure we get it right first time, on time, every time. Welcome, Welcome to, the, to the, team. the team. Welcome to the team. We look forward to seeing what you can bring. Everybody cheers like their favourite football team has scored a winning goal. There's a high five in the background, overly cheerful and celebratory. Confetti and balloons fall to the floor. Interior, BC Warehouse, training room, evening. A dark room with previous scene finishing on the small television mounted on the wall. The light clicks on, illuminating the training room, a ramshackle whitewashed room with a leaking dripping with a leak dripping slowly into a bucket in the corner tina 42 bored with the world and her job stands in front of the television that concludes your introductory video please tick the box to indicate you have completed that task four people are sat in a row at a desk jimmy early 20s black spiky hair casually dressed ticks the box quickly morgan mid-20s blonde with lots of red lipstick and prettily dressed does so with a flowery pen mildred late 60s curly gray hair and wrinkled too old to be working but needs to ticks her box slowly and louis early 30s bespectacled neat and prim wearing a suit and tie is sat stiffly upright and does his tick with precision any questions were they paid actors or real workers? Real workers. It was filmed at this facility. So they were paid to be that zany? Paid to be there, yes. Paid to be zany, no. They were hypnotised then? No. They really like their jobs? Yes. Do you like your job? Yes. Anything else? Oh, one more. Not from you. It was a serious one. Go on. Will everybody care about my package? Morgan and Mildred snicker. Uniforms. Interior BC Warehouse training room a short time later. Jimmy walks back into the training room now wearing the mint green uniform, blue high visibility jacket and dark grey hat with a visor. He puts his regular clothes on the table and tries to push the visor to the side. Morgan has already adapted the uniform to make it prettier, pulling it tight and choosing to ignore the trousers for her own black leggings. Mildred is struggling with keeping the trousers up as they're three sizes too big and is putting a belt tightly around them just beneath her sagging chest. Louis is wearing his uniform neatly, perfect creases in the legs, the shirt tucked in and tie pulled into a knot. Jimmy pushes the visor back and it stands up, stays up and sat at a jaunty angle. Aha! Uh -huh. Robert, a 51, thinning sandy hair, beer belly, ruddy cheeks and a bit of a moustache, black hat which says leader throws the door open well hello look at my newbies ah, isn't it so nice to see fresh faces i'm robert or rob sometimes bob depending on who you speak to sometimes sir but usually as for visitors who don't know that i'm called robert anywho 
I'm the team leader here and I'm going to show you around. Robert claps his hands together. Jimmy leans over to Morgan. Rob, who needs a volume knob. Morgan giggles. Come on, you lucky lot. Let's get this tour on the road. Gosh, don't you all look so spiffy in those uniforms? Mildred's trousers fall down with a woman. Interior, BC warehouse, ground floor night. Rob is leading the group through the ground floor of the warehouse. The gleaming modern warehouse from the video is replaced with a rundown, broken operation with dust and cobwebs, and people are grumpy, tired, some hunched over, some limping, some with a curiously grey aura. A forklift truck with a puncture blocks the door as a larger man tries to climb over it. We're always really excited to be going through a refurbishment soon. Get some of those little niggles fixed up and ship check. Head up! The motor drops speedily from above, narrowly missing Morgan, who screams in surprise as it crashes on the floor next to her. Everyone jumps, apart from Rob, who doesn't flinch, and his hand creeps to the radio on his chest. Uh, who lost the motor? Sorry, boss! Can you smell burning? <laughs> A slight haze of smoke descends. Rob claps his hands and smiles. Moving on! The, woman, the group leave the area as a motor fizzles on the floor. A woman carrying a stack of papers walks by the fallen motor as a second one crashes to the ground, smacking her arm as it falls. Papers scatter everywhere. Heads again! Interior, BC Warehouse, repacking area night. A large U-shaped area with stacks of broken boxes, leaking liquids, packaging noodles, follow, floating in the air around them, and a line of younger people with tape dispensers, turning boxes and excessively taping even the smallest of holes. A woman is taping a glass bottle back together. This is where we fix up any damaged parcels. Accidents do happen after all. <laughs> oh. As he talks, the injured woman is carried past them on a stretcher, her arm taped with BCS branded mint green tape, followed by a second stretcher bearing the two broken motors. Sally, where's Sally? Ah, there. Robert points and leads them to Sally, pink hair, large matting, pink glasses. Sally, tell them a little about what you do here. Sally holds up a tape dispenser. <laughs> I tape things. That's literally it. Isn't it great? Not the word I'd use. It's, it's such a huge operation. How many do you have to fix on a daily basis? Loads. Look, I made this one into a swan. Sally holds up a box which has been completely reformed with the tape into a bird-like shape, the atom now broken and sticking out of the swan's head. Louis reaches over and pokes it. But how sheer determination and tape. Robert claps his hands. Moving on. Interior, BC Warehouse, corridor night. Robert is now leading the group through a small corridor. People are scurrying past them holding small paper cups which steam. Others carry papers and clipboards. The walls are adorned with notice boards and inspirational phrases. They walk past, if you can, do. There are so many roles you can apply for here. We have a little of everything. And during your training, you'll be learning each role a sort of man everywhere kind of person. Then you can choose to specialise when there's a role available. The group passes, you just need to show up and then come to a stop by an empty notice board, Louis at the rear. Just keep your eye on this notice board for any vacancies. What notice board? This notice board. Points at it right in front of Louis. Oh, I didn't notice that. I'm here for the scanning. I quite fancy that too. I'm not sure what I'd like to pick, really. How did you pick your care home? Mildred slowly raises her hand and swiftly slaps Jimmy's visor, knocking his hat from his head. Dick. Morgan stifles a laugh. Louis looks concerned. Hold on. What do you mean by an everywhere person? I'm an administrator. An administrator? Like the office people? Yes. I haven't got any office folk on my list. Just whoa. What? No, whoa. W. Oh, whoa. 
What's a whoa? A warehouse officer. No, no, no. I'm meant to be an administrator. Are you sure you didn't just mix up office and officer? No, I interviewed to be an administrator. That's the job I was offered. Look, I have my contract on my phone. I'll show you. There has to be a mistake here. Louis pulls out his phone and frantically scrolls through it, tapping furiously and muttering to himself until he finds what he's looking for. Thanks for coming. Happy to, in terms of the employment. Where is it? Where is it? Aha, here. The role of, oh no, it says warehouse officer. <laughs> Good job you didn't get the administration role if you can't even read a contract. I'm a woe. And we're super happy to have you. Interior, BC Warehouse Canteen Midnight Coffee Break. The four newbies are sat around a grey table. Several small cardboard cups of hot drinks are scattered around them. Jimmy is trying to stack the empty cups while Louis pours over his contract, ignoring the drink in front of him. I can't believe these vending machines are free. Nah, they're free for a reason. Have you not noticed they don't work very well? What's not very well? Hit the button and a bit of whirring and whooshing and ta-da! You hit any button and get the same liquid. Look at it. Morgan holds out a cup to Mildred's for comparison. They are the same shade of greyish brown. Mildred hit hot chocolate. I hit latte. She then takes a sip of her drink and pulls a somewhat disgusted face. What is this? Is it tea? Coffee? I can taste blackcurrant. Louis, what do you think? Hmm? Louis looks up from his phone. What does your drink taste like? And uh, that's that. There we are. <laughs> so, um, Stuart, thoughts? Uh, well, first things first. Um, I really warmed this script and I could imagine it very vividly um, when I read it earlier and again when we just read it just then. Um, my big question is why is it an animation? I, I, I mean this could work in real action, uh, live action. And the, I mean the characters, I felt the characters were really well created and rounded um, and funny and um, I could just see this happening. You know, it was a comedy script um, and it's sort of it's quite appealing to have a story set in a big warehouse, automated warehouse and bits of the warehouse that aren't all gleaming and shiny. Um, it's quite interesting. Um, and I don't think it's been done before. I, I can't remember a series set in like an Amazon warehouse or something like that. It'd be quite interesting. Um, I liked the. I, it's just me. I like visual gags, and so I laughed out loud when I when you read about Mildred's trousers falling down because they were too big and things like that. So I I like all that kind of visual humour. Um, but yeah, as I said, I thought the characters were really well rounded and funny, and um, I thought this was a really really good start actually, and um, I'd like to see it being made. Thank you, uh, John. I have to concur with uh, Stuart there. I love slapstick humour. One of my great, oh, I'll rephrase that, one of, I think, the funniest films ever made is called The Plank. It's only 15 minutes long and it's just brilliant. I love it. Uh, and, yeah, well-written characters. I found it very funny. There were definitely laugh-out-loud moments and... As Stuart says, would love to see this made, but I think live action as opposed to uh, animation. But I suppose with animation, you can do the whole elbow getting smacked by an engine and such like that because animated people are more bendy than real people. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I would definitely like to know what what's further down the road definitely thoroughly enjoyed it thank, thank you for letting us read it emma 
I liked it less. Um, and I think that's because <laughs> I'm a word person more than a, mm. you know, a, a visual humour person. And I think it's just that. Um, because actually, when you said, Andrew, um told us it was an animation, it kind of, to me, made more sense. And um, I think, you know, there are some things in there which, which are very interesting. Um, you know, again, the usual things of, um, you know, when is it set? Is it in the future? Is it now? Um, uh, and um, you know, just those kinds of things. It'd be interesting to know and where. I'm guessing this country, various things seem to suggest it was. Um, uh, and um, I think, do you know, I don't know if um, anybody else agrees with me, but I think some of it is a bit sort of like um, a bit ageist about Mildred because it was going on about her um, <laughs> her wrinkles and, and about, you know, no. her sagging bosoms and things like that. And I just thought, well, really, I mean, you know, if they get somebody who's in their 60s to um, to do it, then, you know, lucky them, first of all. And also um, they're <laughs> going to look like the, the way that they look, really. So um, I just didn't know whether we needed all those details about, you know, the, the decrepitude of age, personally. But um, maybe that's just me being a bit thin skinned. Um, I was glad she knocked Jimmy's hat off because I didn't like Jimmy at all. I thought mm. Jimmy was a twit. And um, uh, at the, I mean, I think the relationships are, are, are have got potential to, to them. But I do yeah. think at the moment the characters are slightly broadly outlined. But um, having seen that it's a, an animation, that kind of makes more sense to me. Um, a bit semaphored. Um, I thought it was an interesting world, you know, like um, uh, if you remember back to films like Brazil and um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and things like that set in a big place where, you know, it could be that it was a bit magical and a bit strange, or it could be like an Amazon outlet, you, you know, where horrible things are supposed to happen and people, you know, are almost tortured, aren't they, by not being allowed to go for a wee and things when they need to. And, um, <laughs> you know, I mean, it could be nastier or it could be more magical. It could go in other directions. At the moment... I don't feel yet kind of um, what and who it's for, to, to be perfectly honest, but I would like to find out. It reminded me a bit of um, a book I read when I was quite young by Keith Waterhouse called Office Life. And um, this was like pre... Um, pre the internet and what was interesting about this book was that this um chap goes to work in this big office it's got many many floors in a great big building and uh you know he's having to sort of um deal out uh, or dole out office supplies um you know paper clips i think was his thing and it turned out that with time he's going what do we actually produce here in this company nobody seemed to know but they seemed happy enough in their work and it turned out they produced nothing and the whole thing was set up just for people to <laughs> you know have jobs and um you know stand things and passing so it's a little bit like you know some of Kafka and things like that so yeah it's um you know I mean, they could they could have some interesting fun with it um so yeah I'd, I'd like to see where it where it heads mm, thank you um so yeah I, I I kind of have to concur with you Emma um now I wasn't entirely blown away with it um when I when I first looked through it earlier today it put me in mind of Monsters Inc um, which is entirely set in a factory. But having said that, it, only from the setting point of view, because I then couldn't understand why the character, why it was animation, when all the characters were not kind of drawn as uh, as animated characters um, in the descriptions. They're, they're they're kind of drawn as real people. I know we do get real people in animation, etc. And but. Um, yeah, I, I think you could do it as live action, but I think if you're going to do it as animation, maybe it needs to be slightly more out of left field. Um, again, I also concur with Emma on the age um, thing. Um, an old woman in her 60s. <laughs> mm -hmm. Have you know, I am in my 60s and I am not an old woman. <laughs> okay. <laughs> By any stretch mm. of the imagination. Mm. Um, and... Um, um, and woe betide anybody who calls you Exactly. Um, <laughs> the other thing that I worried slightly, oh, oh, let me just let me just say uh, there were a few kind of little niggling um, um, grammatical things um, that I think and they're, and they're, and they're nothing. So you can kind of even choose to ignore them if you will. But I have problems when people say, and this may just be me, um, they they are sat yes. at a table. Yes. Just say they're sitting at a table. I know, I know. 
it, it really gets me all the time and I don't know why um I mean it's, it's not really crazy because I think you know if, if you're seat I don't know it's almost like you get um seated by an usher or something like that but yeah I, I hate I was sat I really get on my way yeah it, it, it's kind of yeah it's just one of those things that you kind of go ah I know. Uh, <laughs> um I really I, I really that. handle I am slightly I, I really handle I was sat sit there sitting. Exactly. <laughs> oh, I am slightly starting to wonder, 10 minutes in, what's happening? What is going to happen? Because nothing has happened in this 10 minutes <laughs> other than we've discovered it's not as the image of their advert is showing yeah. us. Do we need to have 10 minutes of them walking through this factory or can we get them to where the action's actually going to happen faster? Yeah. I don't know. Do I, I'm, I'm not sure. As I don't know what's going to happen after this, but if 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 I had to make a decision based on ten minutes, I would say pass. And I don't want to do that because I think the idea is great, and I do I do like some of the little elements of you know some of the dialogue and some of the little funny comedy asides and things are great. So yeah, that's what I'm going to say. Thank you. Anyway, thank you. Mm. No thanks.